pause. Temi Uelo? This is the program Beehive Pradasmat. And I, Andre Nikolaev, da. Today, as my guest. Which means, yours as well. A man has arrived who knows everything. So, now, please welcome the publicist, Anatoly Vasarama. Hello. I, Anatoly. Hello, mind. I remembered the words of Trump. Law. Who once said that Biden, like Hoover, is launching a great depression. Is that true? And when specifically referring to the Great Depression, I contributed to the Second World War. We can draw a parallel with the present time. Shifting our focus there. Must. Wall. Now memoir. May what? Wait, why? The current Great Depression took an open form in 2008. It had already been brewing. In a more subtle way. The first signs of it appeared in the late 90s. But they were successfully contained at that time. Namely, there was the so-called dot-com crash. Which affected the first generation of internet businesses. There was a major economic collapse in Southeast Asia. The repercussions of this also affected us in the form of the default on August 17, 1998. However, back then, everything was contained. But from 2008 onwards, the depression has already won show. The world economy is general and continuous. In other words, it was possible to divide it into several declines using all sorts of accounting tricks. Alternating, it seems, with rises. However, when you start transitioning from statistics in monetary terms to statistics in natural measurements, such as meters and tons, it turns out that the main directions of global production are continuously declining. And cheering. This is comparable to the Great Depression of the 1930s. Nin now, now Karens, Nil Berzi. Unlike the Depression that began on October 24, 1929, and ended on September 4, 1939, with the first shots of the second phase of World War II, the current Depression is very generously flooded with money. Fortunately, since the idea of the gold standard has been abolished, Money is not actually tied to any real values and essentially serves as just units of account. This idea has many drawbacks. There are some advantages. One of them is that thanks to this unrestrained flow of money, the current depression is developing much more slowly than the previous one. And people have time to adapt to each of its successive stages. What? But she will enter the world war as something great. I... Do you see? Even in the third phase of the world war, it is magnificent. In the third phase of the world war, the great powers have learned to exchange wars like apartments. One big one for several small ones in different areas. And why? That's why the third phase was called the Cold War. And this art didn't disappear in the fourth phase, which began under Gorbachev and ended. Well, 
practically together with Yanukovych. And in the current fifth phase, which hasn't yet received a clear name, it hasn't disappeared either. So, I think we won't reach a full-scale war. In particular, we probably won't be building. I mean, the Stalin Strait between Canada and Mexico. But I'm completely sure that several missiles are already aimed at the Yellowstone. Experts have already calculated the intervals at which they should arrive there. Well, not everyone remembers now. But basically, in the National Park, there is a Yellowstone. Yes. 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 One of the largest volcanoes in the world is located there. The last time it erupted lies in Wall. Several hundred thousand years ago. Well, around 600 to 700,000 years ago. Since then, energy has been accumulating in it and by rough estimates. When it goes off. If we don't come up with a way to release this energy in small portions before that. If it all gets released at once. Then there will be vague memories left of North America. At the same time, it is likely that Chukaka and Kamchatka will disappear. A diatre. Uh, Pramorsky cry, Khabarovsk cry, what we see, and both to prices, and to prices. Um. No, not only that, there are enough earth movers, layers of volcanic ash, and all sorts of other things. Pal gals, it's better not to let it come to this, but as a backup option, it means all including those who live, to compare to not far from this very yellow stone. That very great depression of the 1930s contributed to the industrialization. That is, the revival of our country. Ah, uh, is this the case with the current situation? Naming him? Ah, well. Well, then we really managed to buy a lot of discounted technology equipment. We even bought numerous turnkey factories, meaning they were fully assembled and set up by us. The Gorky Automobile Plant, strictly speaking. That's... Central. That is federal inserts. We agreed on the purchase even before the start of the Depression. The thing is, Ford came to the conclusion that one of his factories was already outdated, decided to sell it, and use the proceeds to buy a new one. And indeed, he succeeded in doing so. But we bought many factories precisely at the peak of the Depression. Well, now the Depression is contributing to the industrialization, not so much of the Russian Federation, but of the People's Republic of China. Since we were deliberately cut off from many useful technologies even in peacetime. Let me give you an example. It was actually the first episode of an economic war against us that I noticed. There were probably some before. But I didn't pay attention to them. In 2012, General Motors went bankrupt to such an extent that it decided to sell its German division Opel. In order to cover the debts of its other divisions with the proceeds from the sale. And it turned out that the only party interested in buying Opel was our Kamaz. The thing is, that during the time when Opel was owned by an American company, it technologically lagged behind most other European companies. The Germans even have a sarcastic saying, that every car sooner or later becomes an Opel. In other words, the European buyers didn't need the company. And we took into account 
that Opel's commercial vehicles traditionally outperform their passenger cars. And since by that time, the modernization potential of the truck model that we bought from Ford, along with the factory that was operating in neighbor Esni Chelny, had been exhausted, and the art of our engineers was no longer sufficient to maintain the proper level of these trucks within the previous concept, we decided to buy Opel, too. So to speak, infuse fresher blood into this Ford. We decided to buy GM to infuse some fresh blood, so to speak, into this Ford. And then, the United States government provided General Motors with a colossal loan, enough to cover all debts, on unheard of terms. Not only was the interest rate on the loan even lower than the Federal Reserve rate, but it was offered at unprecedented conditions. At that time, the Federal Reserve rate was a quarter percent, and the loan was granted at all. One and, 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 Interest free. And, in addition to this, one in Z1, the General Motors stocks pledged as collateral for this loan remained under the control of the board of directors. Although ideally, the creditor should have control over the pledged stocks. S3. How is this related to the situation of the revival of the industry? in Russia. 1. Azegwal. Here is what was done specifically to prevent us from accessing the technology. Although outdated by Western standards, it is still relevant for us. Uh, mm -hmm. The West is outsourcing to regions with cheap labor. Die. Not be. And then it repeated itself time after time in many directions but with the introduction of unauthorized economic restrictions, which began even under Obama in 2014. We were deprived of the opportunity to purchase anything serious in the West, so we are forced to rely on Chinese and Indian suppliers, which is second-hand technology, as the West exports to regions with cheap labor, mostly not the best. Odd. Freshly invented. Well, yes, you guessed it. Do you think the version is correct? That the Democrats have power over the USA, and in order to keep Biden in power and maintain their leadership position in the USA, I, a major war is needed, but with conventional weapons against a part of Russia and NATO. What? Well. It's quite possible, but I still think that they will manage with less resources. For example, they may carry out on a larger scale the fake ticket drop that they already did in 2020. But doesn't everyone already know about this? Ats, 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 ats. But everyone already knows all this. 
It's just a trick. It's impossible to fool someone 14 times. And with checkers, the seams show. Mwah. The text translates to. The second time is not allowed. If I remember correctly. As. How was it done then? Was it? Oiwin. COVID was sent by mail. One. I'm sorry. When activists of the Democratic Party are not allowing Republican activists at most polling stations and pushing them a few meters away from the tables where the vote counting is happening, a ballot can be placed in any pile. And at some polling stations, activists of the Republican Party were simply kicked out the doors and the windows were covered from the inside. Oh, well. But now this is hardly possible, because it could all end, including the civil war in the USA. Two Americas could simply turn out Democratic and Republican. <laughs> These very activists have not done anything serious. So, naturally, the Democrats hope that there will be a lot of noise now, but no action. Right. I presume. In principle, they need a big war, but we'll try to manage with maneuvers, right? No. Let's assume that the Democrats will not be able to block the insurgents at the polling stations, and Trump wins. How then can the configuration of our opponents change? Ah. Well, in this case. Trump will try to distance himself from all unprofitable projects, of which there are quite a few now. And this, in particular, will lead to us, Ukraine shutting off the tap. That will give the European Union the right and the opportunity to act at its own discretion. And the current leadership of the European Union is not only leading it towards Ukraine, but towards many other places as well. Specifically, green energy. This is absolutely wild devastation. As far as I know, no wind turbine or solar panel has generated more electricity over its entire service life than was used in its manufacture. So, this is a loss not only in a monetary sense, but in a purely physical sense. They consume energy. They ultimately generate it. Wind turbines and solar panels are useful where cables cannot reach. But, in all other places, they are destructive. Nevertheless, the leadership of the European Union is seeking to replace normal energy with renewable energy, effectively killing the region's energy industry, which in turn kills the region's industry. Not to mention that due to the uneven operation of these renewable sources, for every watt of power from wind turbines or solar panels, a watt with a small gas turbine generation has to be introduced into the power system. Why specifically with a gas turbine? It is the only type of generator capable of responding quickly enough to handle these fluctuations. Well, closer to Europe and its problems. And So this is precisely Europe's problem in the first place. Here. Furthermore. If. For example. In France they still sporadically try to implement some measures to increase birth rates. Then Germany has already lost all hope for this increase. Not from a good life of the angel Dorothea Horstovna Kasner. Who. Through her first husband. 
Merkel, stated that Germany can accept and digest any number of migrants. It was able to accept, but not digest. And this means that the replacement of their own descendants by immigrants leads to the destruction of the entire culture, including the cultural tradition that has long kept Germans in the position of the country with the highest quality production in the world. In other words, you are talking about the destruction of Europe. Yes, and its demise. Yes, in the end, Europe collapsed. It perished. There was devastation. What's next? Well, of course. I hope that there are still enough sensible people in Europe to understand where current policies are leading and to try something different. But if the European peninsula of the Eurasian continent really steps out of the role of cultural leader, it has held for about five centuries. It simply means that other countries will take on that role. I certainly hope that it will be Russia in general, and the Russian Federation in particular. But I cannot guarantee this. Of course. Because we are too poisoned by Europe. X. Well, an empty sacred place doesn't exist. Someone will be found for the role of a cultural leader in design. Apps. Currently, our leadership has directed our special services to find both previous enemies and traitors. The president recently stated that terrorism is a two-way weapon. How should this be understood? One, men. I'm sorry, but you haven't provided any text for translation. Please provide the text you would like me to translate into English. Um... Well, recently, Kuzmishev was shot. Kuzminov, I think, our pilot, who hijacked a helicopter. And the point is not even that he hijacked the helicopter. The point is that he killed two of his crewmates. That's it. Naturally. There is no documentary evidence that we did this. May. Mm -hmm. There is none. But personally, I would conduct several open remote proceedings against various criminals. At In particular, concerning the employers of the terrorist organization UKIT, all those Bidens, Barrels, and Sunokas, I... But although here is the executive, Neil... Conducted several transparent processes specifically with the employers themselves. Jalbiu Bori. I would publish the sentences. After which I would announce that the verdict had come into legal force. Morta. Dot. Anyone can execute it. Approximately. Odd. Ed. 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 But not just anyone. As far as I know, there are some nuances in the law that determine who is entitled to execute sentences, who is not entitled. But these nuances can always be somehow refined. Add, not just anyone. As far as I know, there are some nuances in the law that determine who is authorized to carry out sentences, who is not. But these nuances can always be somehow worked out. I really liked your idea about open court proceedings for those who organized the UQ project. 
it's a great way to intercept the news agenda. In my opinion. On. Yes. As far as the informational agenda is concerned, it is clear that Western mass media propaganda and disinformation will try, if not completely silence, these processes, then at least provide a highly distorted presentation of them. However, the global majority will undoubtedly take pleasure in observing the dirty stains on the laundry of self-proclaimed examples of morality. Ha! Ah. Interesting. There should be a defender. Let's say. Or Badim. Will the state appoint a lawyer? Or will someone volunteer? Na na wa. Well, I think that Biden is unlikely to send his lawyers. But our numerous legal celebrities will gladly use these processes as a pretext. More precisely, as a channel for advertising. And sen. Here is the translation of the text into English. Here, experts have reported that in Germany, it has been concluded that if one of the NATO countries becomes involved with Ukraine and sends its soldiers to Ukraine, then Russia's strike on the airfield of that NATO member will not trigger Article 5 of the NATO agreement. Now, new. Yes. I will remind you that this very fifth point of the Washington Treaty concluded. I'm not mistaken. On April 4th, 1949, states that in the event that one of the participating parties becomes the target of aggression from outside, the other participants of the treaty are obliged to initiate consultations on the possibility and form of providing support. How do NCD? This means that the treaty does not require the direct involvement of all of NATO in a war, even if one of the countries is attacked, and if a country has ventured somewhere on its own and has received something for it. Ashed. The contract clearly states that the girl was living there. She herself is to blame. Listen. It turns out that this point number five is fixed. Right. Not entirely fixed. Originally. When they were writing this. Possibility of a Soviet attack on any country was meant. Western Europe. Western Europe. Obviously. Such an attack could not have come from our side. But let's say. I, uh, as a precaution. Gather your forces. The fate of Finland. Mjöln. Under fears. The fate of Finland. Mm -hmm. After her three attacks on our territory. Which finally prompted a response on the fourth occasion. Many were alarmed. I mean. The Finns had attacked us three times before. Once during our civil war. And twice in the 1920s. Ah. Uh, Then a few calmed down. L. Many serious researchers, after carefully analyzing the shelling of the Grens post near the village of Manila, which served as a pretext for the start of the Winter War, have come to the conclusion that such films were fired, and they fired simply because their army had already been mobilized. And it was difficult to keep a large part of the able-bodied population in service for a long time. This is pure devastation. And the Finns hoped that if shooting started, the English and the French would stand up for them. They did not intervene. But they did not have time to intervene. They hesitated for too long. 
It was hoped that the Mannerheim line would be taken seriously, and for a long time. Odd. They did not interfere, but did not have time to interfere. They hesitated for too long. It is hoped that the Mannerheim line will seriously last for a long time. Right now Zelensky is building a line of fortifications on the right bank of the Dnipro. In your opinion, what does this mean? Are you ready to give up morally all of the East? Ukraine, la, saharku, dot, samuna, nai, poltava, dot, chernihiv, nyanmalas. Well, not that he's ready. But he understands that he will have to. As for the left bank, he still hopes not to give it away. But Here, you mentioned Ukrainian terrorism. Now in Belgrade, we are constantly under shelling. However, people there are not leaving nevertheless. This is what we can do for Belgrade. Bearing in mind that the front line does not advance immediately. Nay, sell pies. As long as there is a terrorist organization, it will engage in terrorism. And as long as it exists, as we progress, the West will send more long-range weapons to Ukraine. Therefore, the only way to help is to completely eliminate it with the return of the Russian-majority citizens of Ukraine. The status of full-fledged citizens of the Russian Federation, or maybe the name Russia, will come to the forefront, so to speak. But in any case, there should not be at least in the old world, any square meter referred to as independent Ukraine, as this square meter will inevitably be used as a springboard for anti-Russian activities. I was... I agree with this. And, it will happen. But after some time. But, but what about the time? A year. Two. May. Three. And now. Now. Maybe. Or a year. Of some sort. Let's say. What? Let's say. Belgorod. Residence. Why me we? As far as I know. Some economic benefits have already been provided to Belgorod and the region. In addition, an evacuation has been organized. I can't remember exactly how many, but it seems that around 12,000 children have been evacuated to other regions. Adults who wish to be evacuated are also provided with this opportunity, but there are very few who wish to evacuate. I can quote the conclusion of my article written in early 1992. Unfortunately, it was not published because the newspaper where I wrote closed down. And in general, why do those who have a bad life leave? Let those who are the cause of the bad life leave. There are much fewer of them. Now, a ministry or department responsible for migration policy should be created. What changes are needed in migration policy? Maybe we should invite North Koreans. Not very disciplined ones. Oh. Well, the citizens of North Korea are disciplined mainly because they know they will have to return. And there they will be held accountable for any mistake. It's Ray. 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 Today, if they are invited to permanent residency, as experience shows, they quite soon stop differing from Russians. We have a lot of immigrants from Korea living here, both from the south and from the north. 
they quickly stop differing from Russians. Therefore, they can only be invited on the conditions of organized recruitment for work, or specific, not too long periods, and the main thing to pay attention to, or rather, to whom to pay attention to, are the bearers of Russian civilization. They do not necessarily have to be Russian by origin, but Russian by culture. And here, the difficulties begin. The main difficulty is associated with the fact that, apparently, another collapse of Russia is already ending, as all the previous ones ended. And in a fairly short time, Russia will reunite within more or less the old borders. And to all. 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 The gathering has begun. It has begun. Why? Say. Yes. That's why if we invite all Russians to come to us now, let's say, from Kazakhstan or Turkmenistan, it only means that we will have to send many Russians back there again soon. Not necessarily those who have left, but it's better to send them specifically, because they are more familiar with the local conditions. Similarly, if we bring back all Russian Germans to us, it's... We will reduce the chances of common sense prevailing in Germany and let people capable of acting in accordance with common sense come to power. And this means that we should invite not Russians from Central Asia first and foremost, but invite them under conditions that would require them to adapt to Russian civilization, and in such numbers that we can integrate them into Russian civilization. For example, in the 1920s, when many refugees from Russia after the revolution resettled in Germany, Germany was able to quickly assimilate a large portion of them. However, after the end of the second phase of World War II, when Germany was forced to invite millions of Turks to compensate for the loss of its labor force, it turned out that a large part of these Turks remained culturally Turks and did not become Germans. Therefore, we should invite migrants in reasonable amounts and focus not on cheap labor, but on the technical upgrading of excellence. And on. In reasonable quantities, generally not relying on cheap labor, all, but on technical rearmament and improvement. But this is not happening at the moment. Most likely because the relevant structure, reacting to migrants, is not functioning properly. Or something else is required. Now, one's any well, one saw. The matter is not only in this but also in the fact that for each specific entrepreneur who has numerous low-skilled jobs, it is easier to hire unskilled labor than to transform their production into something that requires less labor, but more skill. Ah.
But the state as a whole is not interested in such an approach. Therefore, we need to first understand that this migration department should work not only in the interest of a few entrepreneurs, but in the interest of you, 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 you. Society as a whole. The state is just one of the instruments created by society to address particular large and significant tasks. Todd. And these people who are planning to come here must mostly be low-skilled workers. As for the highly qualified ones, in your opinion, are they interested in Russia? After all, they can go anywhere. For example, to China. No. Most of the residents of the regions of Russia still remain within the boundaries of Russian civilization. Therefore, for them, moving from Dushanbe to Chelyabinsk is much easier than to Shanghai. Pan. Oriented towards Russia. Within the Russian civilization. Therefore, for them to move, let's say, uh, from Dushanbe to Chelyabinsk is much easier than to Shanghai. When I looked at you from a certain background, I found that you like, or have often repeated, the phrase of Lev Gumilev that I am not an intellectual. I have a profession. You do not like intellectuals. Wow, do you? Well, how can I put it? My friend, a colleague on several journalistic projects, philosopher-publicist Viktor Grigoryevich Marakovsky, quite detailed, showed that the Russian intelligentsia was originally created with the task of translating the achievements of Western Europe onto Russian soil. Since there was a period when we significantly lagged behind this very Western Europe, and even when we mostly caught up with this lag, intelligentsia still remains within the framework of its original task. But Habistar. Let's talk about illness. Intelligence pretends. Um. That is, the very tradition of the intelligentsia implies an exaggerated respect for the West and an exaggerated disregard for the homeland. Naturally, many overcome this, especially the scientific and technical intelligentsia, familiar with their own achievements. But in the humanitarian intelligentsia, this tradition is preserved practically unchanged and independent of external circumstances. Odd. Have you heard about the explosion of plutonium weapons in Kamelnitsky and Ternopil last year? The explosion was very large, similar to a nuclear one. And there is a large contaminated area. Ukraine, Western Europe, the Baltics, Britain, died. Paul? Ah. Uh, no. I very much doubt that there is weapons-grade plutonium there. Its purification from other reactor products is a very complex matter. In addition, in regular energy reactors, plutonium is produced not only plutonium-239, suitable for weapons purposes, but also plutonium-240, that is, with an extra neutron, which not only is not suitable itself for weapons purposes, but also as an impurity, significantly hinders the triggering of plutonium-239 in weapons mode. Therefore, 
weapons-grade plutonium is produced in reactors of special design, with a special arrangement of rods. And it is very difficult to convert energy reactors to operate under such a regime. So I think that most likely it was raw material for dirty bombs that exploded there. That is, a mixture of various radioactive isotopes, which, in simple terms, are dispersed using conventional explosives. And Due to the excess neutrons, which are not suitable for weapons purposes and significantly hinder the triggering of plutonium-239 in weapons mode, weapons-grade plutonium is produced in reactors of special design. With a specific arrangement of rods, it is very difficult to convert energy reactors to operate under such conditions. Therefore, I believe that most likely there was an explosion of raw materials for dirty bombs which is a mixture of various radioactive isotopes that are dispersed using conventional explosives. Why? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where did this come from? Where did it come from Ukraine? Moreover, these very waste materials could simply explode due to a violation of the technology of their storage. The thing is that in radioactive waste, heat continues to be emitted for quite a long time precisely due to decay. They are radioactive precisely because nuclei decay. If this heat is not dissipated, on so much of it can accumulate that sooner or later. Ah, medium reaction initiated. All ball. Some sort of pranks. No, something will just boil there. For example, usually these spent fuel elements are stored under a layer of water. Well, the water absorbs most of what they emit. But if this water is not constantly circulated to cool, it can boil, and this boiling can disperse, scatter a considerable portion of the contents of these heat-generating elements. There's a lot of radioactivity there. By the way, right now, a terrorist organization is quite actively shelling the spent nuclear fuel storage at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, specifically counting on the fact that any disruption in the storage regime caused by shelling will lead to the dispersal of these very radioactive waste. And... I have two final questions. One about our allies. The president of Serbia dot. Can Serbia be called allies? But, nevertheless, said that the nation is facing very serious challenges. In connection with this, please tell me, will the Anglo-Saxons put pressure on Serbia in the near future? Or will the leader of Serbia manage to maneuver to a solution, like the situation in Ukraine? Oh na, nah. how roar. Let's agree on the assessment. NATO's strength will last from one to five years. At
Mm -hmm. After that, an uncontrollable collapse will begin in various directions. Well, of course, this is under the current policy. I don't know how much strength Serbia has left. Not only me, but I'm afraid it doesn't know either. Well, do you know the pupil? President Vucic. Therefore, no one can say whether Serbia will hold up or not, but I really hope for it. At. I don't know. You are President Vucic. Therefore, no one can say whether Serbia will hold on or not, but I really hope for that. We can say that we have seen the light at the end of the tunnel now. Wow. What? Well. I think we have one positive piece of news on our menu. Namely, that our opponents have a lot more negative news than we do. Currently, presidents of the Russian Federation are often criticized for not taking what seem to be obvious and necessary sharp actions. So, I believe there is no need for them to do so. Because our opponents are worsening their own positions by their own efforts to such an extent that our sharp actions will add very little to it. Sit calmly by the riverbank and the corpse of your enemy will float past you. Oh. Roughly like this. But it must be said that this image with the river implies that your enemy will fall into someone else's hands. But in this case, our enemies fell into the hands of the prey themselves. Est and the melon tied. 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 Thank you very much. It was interesting talking to you. Finally. What? Nice to meet you. What? Me all. Al. Merus. Yes, I'm